Welcome back guys to yet another Jay-Z fishing video and in today's video we are going to be creating a step-by-step -step guide teaching you how to catch a rainbow trout under a budget here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Stay tuned. At the time of filming this video it is currently December 13th and we are in the midst of winter here in the San Francisco Bay Area and around this time fishing tends to really slow down especially in the salt water so a lot of guys like us who are mainly saltwater fishermen turn to freshwater and specifically to rainbow trout, stocked rainbow trout that is, uh, to find a really, really good fight, a really rewarding fish to catch. And once you figure out how to catch these fish, it's really simple, it's really easy, and best of all, it's extremely inexpensive to get into the hobby. So this is great for beginners uh, or people who have fished before. Really, really perfect first time fishing for beginners. And what's great is these fish are extremely tasty, so if you catch one, you can always keep it. In today's video, we're going to be covering everything, literally everything you need to know on how to catch these fish here in the San Francisco area in lakes. That's a really important piece. This is focusing on lakes and ponds, not so much rivers. And we're going to be going over everything, whether you're a complete beginner and you've never picked up a fishing rod before, or you fished for a couple of uh, different species before and you have a little bit of an idea of what you're doing. This video is going to be perfect for you. And we're going to cover everything right here, right now. Now real quick, before we get into today's video, I wanna give you guys a quick history about trout fishing. Uh, trout fishing has been among the most important and popular programs of the California Department of Fish and Game. In the 1980s, trout fishing was the most popular type of fishery and accounted for about 60% of inland angling effort in California. While there may be fewer species now per capita, trout continue to be the most sought after target of inland anglers, currently at 59% of the total of all types of fish. In the early 1900s, we saw emphasis on the hatchery production of fingerling trout from eggs collected at dozens of egg taking stations. Distribution of fingerlings was initiated throughout the state, and additionally trout removed from their native streams to many other waters, especially the previously fishless lakes and streams in the high mountains. These introductions were carried out by the deputy fish commi commissioners, and transporting trout was considered a great benefit even if it was a difficult task. In 1990, the department stocked a staggering 19 million trout. Nowadays, the three most common rainbow trout stocked in California lakes and ponds are DFG stalker trout, uh, native rainbow trout, and then of course the most beautiful lightning trout. The difference between a native trout and a DFG stalker trout is that native trouts tend to be a little bit bigger, they tend to have more vibrant colors, and they tend to fight a little bit harder. Lightning trout are these awesome kind of goldish color with a really cool red lateral line, and both a native and lightning trout have really good pink meat, whereas a, a DFG stalker trout will have kind of a white meat. A couple things real quick before we get today's video started. I wanna let you guys know that there's gonna be video chapters. If you go, go on a computer, and you look, there should be video chapters so you can skip around today's video and just watch the sections that you need to watch. I'm gonna try and label it as best as possible, but pretty much the timeline for today's video is we're gonna to go to Big Five Sporting Goods in Corte Madera, pick up all the gear that we need to go trout fishing, come back here, rig up, and then go to Bon Tempe Reservoir and hopefully catch some trout. The reason that we're gonna be going to Big Five today is because they tend to have a little bit of more inexpensive gear. Uh, their gear tends to be a little bit cheaper, a little bit lower quality comparatively to like something like West Marines, but if you're just a beginner, you don't need a very expensive combo, which is why I'm gonna be going with Big Five, proving to you that you can get a really nice combo for a really cheap amount of price. We're gonna try and stay under a budget of $50. We will realistically be going over that just because the stock has been really low due to supply chain issues with COVID-19. But I will be creating an Amazon wish list that will be uh, linked in the description box below that will definitely be under 50 bucks if uh, budget is a big issue for you. So we're gonna head to uh, Big Five now and we're gonna pick out our combo and our gear. Great, don't let me go and crave. All right, you guys, we're here at Big Five, and there are a lot of tackle stores around here, West Marines, Big Five Sporting Goods. Uh, there's a bunch in the city, um, and they're all really good. But in terms of like trout gear, I found that Big Five has the best prices. Uh, a lot of the West Marine stuff is really expensive, and it's really high quality, 
but it is kind of expensive. And for a beginner, I found that Big Five tends to be a better place to get new stuff. So we're gonna head in there, see if we can find a good package of stuff for around 50-ish bucks is the goal. But let's see what we can do. All right, y'all, so the first thing that we're gonna be looking for today is a rod and reel. Preferably, we're gonna get a combo because that's just gonna be a little bit cheaper. And just going through here, all of the rods and reels that I'm seeing are mostly light stuff. Now, it's not very salt, it's not, there's not many saltwater selection, which is good because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a really light rod. And right now, I've narrowed it down to a couple things. The number one here is the Akuma Avenger. This is probably my number one pick. It's about a seven foot rod. It's a rod and reel combo, it's a spinning combo. Only issue is it's 90 bucks. So it's a little bit above our price range of, of 50 bucks. Um, but if you're looking for a really nice trout combo, this is a perfect one. I don't think we're gonna pick it up today, but man, one day, it's a very, very nice combo. But uh, in terms of a more realistic option, let's come around here to the other side. And we have the Shimano. Uh, I don't even know what this is called. The Shimano FX. I don't know. This is like a little, little combo. It's like six, five, six feet long. Uh, it's an ultra light. It's a 1,000 size spinning rail, which is exactly what we want. Um, and it's pretty much perfect. And it only is $34.99. So I'm kind of thinking this might be the one, but I'm going to take another look around and see if there's anything else that I uh, see that might be comparable to this. Okay, I think we found maybe another rival. This is the Akuma Cascade. It's a spinning combo like all the others. Very similar to the first one that we found, the second one that we found. It's seven feet long. It's $29.99 and it comes with line. Now here's the one thing though. The rod feels just about as nice as the Shimano, but this reel does not feel very good. I know this handle looks really funny, but I can show you how to fix that if you were to buy it but I don't think I'm going to. And I know it comes with line, but I would probably replace that anyways because I think this is too thick for trout. So I'm thinking more towards the Shimano. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's a little bit higher quality and Shimano is a pretty big name brand. Not saying that Akuma isn't, but I think I'm gonna go with the Shimano for now. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the Shimano. Uh, let's, let's put this one back and let's start getting all the other stuff that we need for the trout rigs. So real quick, as I'm editing this, for whatever reason, the video of me picking out the line didn't show up, but I bought four pound monofilament, and you'll see it later on in the video. It was $4.99, it was called four pound mono. Uh, I'm not sure why the video just didn't get that section, but uh, yeah, let's continue on. So now that we have the rods and the line, let's get the hooks, the swivels, the weights that we need, and we get the bait and we should be all good to go. So in terms of hooks, there are two kinds of hooks that are popular when it comes to trout fishing. There's treble hooks, which look like these. They have little four hooks, hence the name treble. Um, and these are really good. I mean, honestly, when it comes down to treble hooks versus a normal hook, which would look something more like that, it's just one singular hook, it depends on whether or not you're keeping fish. If we're gonna keep fish, I like to use treble hooks because they get a bit of a more secure grip on the fish. But that being said, they're a little bit worse on the fish. If you're gonna release them, I would suggest using a regular hook. I'm just, it's interesting, I'm looking, here's a pre-made trout bait rig. I don't know if I'd buy this though, just because I feel like this would be very tangled, especially with the light line. So instead of getting uh, treble hooks, because, oh, and treble hooks also tend to be a little bit more expensive. So today we're gonna be purchasing a size eight, that's what I like to use, size eight live bait circle hooks from Mustad. Mustad is one of my favorite hook brands. We're gonna be picking these out. Let's add these to our little cart over here. And then we're gonna get swivels and weights and bait we should be all good to go. All right, time for weights. In terms of weights, I always like to use sliding weights. Uh, they're called egg weights, I believe. And here they are, egg sinkers. Three fourth ounce uh, size is like what I like to use. It's just three fourths ounces. They look like this. They're water gremlin, they're called egg sinkers. The line goes in one end, comes out the other. Three fourth ounce to an ounce usually is my favorite. You can really go between half an ounce and an ounce, just depending on how deep of water you're fishing. But three fourths tends to be the perfect uh, median. So let's add this to our cart. And then let's go get some swivels. Swivels are just what you attach from your main line to your leader. 
and you don't need very, very heavy swivels. And in fact, we can even just pick up these right here. These are size 10 swivels. They're $1.49, they're extremely cheap from Eagle Claw. Any real barrel swivel, barrel swivel is really what you wanna pick up. I wouldn't really suggest barrel swivels with a safety snap, that's for a completely different scenario. I also would not suggest three wheel swivels. Really try and get yourself a barrel swivel. It doesn't matter, I wouldn't go any smaller than a size 10, but you can go pretty much a little bit bigger. But a size 10 is a really, really good size. So we're gonna put those there. And then in terms of bait, uh, there's a lot of choices that you have. We're gonna be fishing like an actual bait uh, instead of like a lure. And you know, a really, really popular brand is Powerbait. They sell this dough stuff, which tends to be pretty popular. I don't really like it because I feel like the dough kind of falls off. Oh, and it doesn't get many bites. I much prefer to have like a, a ball of some sort. I've really heard good things about these glitter marshmallows. I've yet to try them. I've heard good things about them, but I've never used them. But uh, that being said, I do want to try them one day. I don't think we're going to use those today. What we tend to use are these Magnum for floating power bait eggs. We usually get them in a, a, a gold or an orange. We have them at our house. We have the orange, but you know what? We might pick up the yellow. I'm in between using this or these, which is like a similar color to what we usually use. You know what? I think I kind of want to try the chartreuse just because we could get a little comparison when we go fishing between chartreuse and orange. But yeah, this is exactly what we use. So we're going to pick these up and uh, that should be everything for now. All right, real quick, I just want to go over everything that we have right now. Number one, the Shimano FX 1000 size spinning rod and reel combo. That's the rod. Size 10 Mustad, size eight, sorry. Size eight Mustad circle hooks. Uh, four pound mono, 300 yards of it. You don't need 300 yards. This reel will probably only fit 150. Um, power bait eggs. This is the chartreuse, but really any color works. Size 10 barrel swivels and then three fourth ounce egg sinkers. This is truly all you need to go trout fishing. We're gonna go check out, go back home and show you how to rig these things up. All right, y'all, I just checked out. I'm in the car. With everything, it came out to a total of 61.29. And one other thing that I forgot to mention, we also purchased these, uh, these uh, pliers. So. I completely forgot to mention this. Having a good pair of pliers with you is so, so crucial because uh, sometimes these fish will swallow these hooks, especially these trout. And you know, a lot of people will tell you you need to buy a good pair of scissors and a good pair of pliers, but a good pair of pliers will have these, these scissors built into them. So I like to just buy a nice pair of pliers. These I got for a really good price, $6.99. So I added this to the list of things, which is why it's a little bit over budget. We would have been a little bit over budget either way, but $61.29 is really not bad for uh, a really, really fun fish to eat and to, to catch. So with that being said, uh, let's get home, let's make these rigs. And do remember, we did uh, upgrade the rod. We, dot, we did buy a bit of a more expensive rod. If we wanted to, we could have purchased the one that was $29.99 and definitely would have been under a uh, $60 budget. And if you guys really, really, really wanted to get even cheaper, you can go on Amazon and get all this stuff. But like I said, it's a really, really cheap and uh, easy, inexpensive way to get fishing. So uh, yeah, let's head home. All right, y'all, we just went to Big Five. We picked up everything we need. And before we start making these rigs, I just wanna let you guys know about how we find our spots and why we figure out which times are uh, the best times to go trout fishing. And the number one thing that I can suggest anyone who's a fisherman is to download the app Fish Brain. We are not in any way affiliated with Fish Brain, but I wish we were because they are a really, really good company. Uh, it's a free app on your uh, phone. I believe they go Android and Apple, but tell me if I'm wrong in the comment sections below. And you just download the app, you create a free account, and you can post your catches and view other people's catches at spots. It's pretty much like free fishing reports. There is a premium version that we pay for where you can see exact locations of where people are catching fish, but if you don't have the uh, free version, if you just look at the photos and you know somewhat the area, you can sometimes kind of figure out where they're at, but it's an extremely helpful app, especially if you're new to fishing and you don't know where to go. In today's video, we're gonna be going to Bon Tempo Reservoir, the exact spot I'm gonna keep hidden, but if you follow us on Fish Brain, you'll be able to find it if you have premium. Um, but yeah, when it comes to finding fishing spots, Fish Brain is the best way to find new spots, at least in my personal opinion. You can also just talk to people, but Fish Brain tends to be the easiest fastest, most efficient way to find new fishing spots. When it comes down to figuring out what the best time to fish for rainbow trout is, there are two deciding factors in my personal opinion, the weather conditions and stocking schedule. 
Those are the two most important things you always want to look for before planning a trout fishing trip. Number one, you really want colder weather. Trout, uh, at least rainbow trout, thrive in uh, water temperatures between 53 and 57 degrees. That tends to be our uh, best water temperature. That's when we found that the trout bite the best. They are a cold water species, which is why fishing for them in the winter uh, and spring months tends to be the hottest time for them. Uh, in terms of stocking schedule, what I always like to do is uh, look up the lake that I'm going to be fishing or pond or whatever body of water and then I look up planting schedule. Uh, when you go uh, on the Google search bar, the one of the first results should be a California DFG official website page. You click on it and it'll look like, I hopefully I have something appearing on the screen right now kind of showing you what this looks like and it will say uh, about a week span between um, when they're stocking, it will say the species, and sometimes there's a map out feature where it will kind of show you around where in the lake they're stocking these fish, which is extremely helpful. And all of this uh, information is available to anyone with the internet access, and uh, will tell you exactly when they stock. I tend to go one or two days after the stock. I try not to go right when it stocks because when the fish immediately get stocked, they tend to be a little bit shocked about their new environment. I like to go a day or two after. That tends to be my favorite time to go fishing. So if you can find a cold day a day or two after the fish stocking happens, that tends to be the hottest time for trout fishing. So one other really, really important thing that I always forget to mention uh, is rod holders. So when you're fishing for trout in lakes or ponds, uh, you're casting your bait out and you're letting it sit. You're not casting and retrieving. It's, uh, it's just you cast it out and you let it sit. And you know, for some people, they like holding their rod. They like waiting for the anticipation of the bite. But me personally, especially considering I'm always fishing two rods at one time, I like to use rod holders. Uh, these are just literally PVC pipe. I don't know exactly how wide they are, but I would say probably uh, two inches, I would say, yeah. Yeah, two inches wide. Um, and these we picked up at Ace's Hardware. I believe it was an eight foot piece that we cut into fourths. So I know we have four of these. Um, and I got them for about 15 bucks and then I spent an extra like six bucks on a mallet that we can mallet them into the ground. In my personal opinion, it's a really, really good investment. And if you want to spend a little bit more money, there are some more expensive rod holders that, we, that are available on Amazon. Uh, I'll link those in the description box below. But you have a lot of selection when it comes to rod holders and it can be really expensive and it can be really fancy, but can also be really simple uh, and really cheap, uh, such as this PVC pipe. I would highly suggest investing in some sort of rod holder because it can be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes to always be holding your rod. All right, real quick, I just wanna go over everything that we have again. Once again, we have the Shimano FX 1000 size spinning combo. We're gonna be putting four pound monofilament line on there. This is a new company. I've never really seen them before. It's called the I Izor line. Very interesting. It was only $5 for 300 yards. So we'll see how that holds up. Power bait eggs. This is gonna be our bait of choice. We're not actually gonna to need to really touch this today while we're just ringing rigging but we'll definitely be using this tomorrow and i'm going to be fishing two rods i'm going to be putting this on this rod here but on my second rod i'm going to be putting the orange version of this so we're going to do a little bit of a battle here see which color does best and then our barrel swivels this is what's going to connect our leader to our main line you'll see what i mean that by that in a minute here um size eight mustad circle hooks uh or i should say uh, they're called live bait hooks here but these are what we're going to be using as our hooks uh, to keep us on the bottom, we're going to be using these egg sinkers from Water Gremlin. These tend to be my go-to, three-fourth ounce. Uh, these are the perfect middle ground between an ounce and like a fourth of an ounce. And then our little cheap plier slash scissors that we got for $7. And then this was not included in the purchase at uh, Big Five. But you're going to need some tape, and I'm going to presume that you have some tape laying around. Uh, so with that being said, let's get uh, this rod and reel spooled up. All right, you guys, so the first uh, step that you're going to need to do is get this fishing line onto your spool. And I apologize before I start doing this. This fishing line, as you guys can see, is ultra thin. It's extremely thin, four pound mono, one of the thinnest fishing lines that is available for purchase. Uh, but all you're going to need for this is the pliers, the line, the tape, and obviously the rod and reel itself. Uh, and so the first thing that you're going to want to do is take this fishing line and go through the first eye hole, just like that. It's very important. You cannot forget that step. And if uh, this video doesn't help you guys understand how to spool up a rod, just go up on YouTube, look up how to spool fishing rod. There'll be someone that does it with thicker lines. It's the same process, so you'll just be able to see it better. Um, but the next step is to go underneath this bale arm right here with the fishing line. This bale arm is this piece of metal right here. Um, and then you're gonna go around the spool, 
just like that. Make a little bit of a loop, and now you can tie that loop down. I know this is super, super hard for you guys to see right now, and I apologize. I tried to figure out a better way to do this, but I think this is just the way that it's gonna have to be. Once again, if you want, you can just look up how to spool a fishing rod and reel, or uh, some tackle shops um, will actually do it for you uh, for a little bit of a charge. I know if you go to West Marines in Sausalito, you can pay them $10 and they will spool it up for you professionally with a machine. Um, honestly, that's what I would suggest a beginner to do, um, especially if you have the time and the money to do it. There it is. And then I'm gonna take my scissors here. There should be a bit of a tag end. And I'm just gonna simply snip that tag end. That way it's just not gonna get in the way of anything. Just like that, came off perfect. And with, with that being said, you should be kind of left with like a knot right there. And your fishing line is officially attached to the spool. Now, before you start spooling it up, there's one last important piece. You're gonna wanna take your tape Sorry, this camera angle is horrible. Take just a tiny piece, just enough to cover the spool. And because the spool is so tiny, I'm actually gonna rip this tape in half. And I'm gonna cover that now with the tape, just an extra added layer of protection. Make sure it doesn't come off and it'll make spooling the rod very easy. I always consider this kind of a crucial process. It'll just make the spooling a lot easier and it'll make the line stay on the spool a lot better. And then from here, it's time to start spooling it up. So what I like to do is this is usually better with two people. You have someone that'll put a pencil through this and it'll hold it like that. Um, that'll make it a lot easier. But because we only got one person today, you wanna hold the line tight with your right hand and slowly reel with your left hand. And if you do that, just like that. Let me stop here, I'll show you. As you can start to see, there's some, some fishing line kind of going on the reel. So let's do this real quick. continuously and it's really important to hold that line tight with your right hand because it'll make sure that the line goes onto the spool tight and uh, very you know very well well spooled and I like to just take a break every couple of seconds make sure it's looking good yes it is because uh, this is one of the most important parts if your rod is not properly spooled the line is gonna be an issue so it's gonna be line twists and it's just gonna make your fishing experience kind of horrible. So I'm gonna fully spool this up to the top. I like to go just until it's very much at the top. I will show you what that looks like here in a minute. I'm gonna stop the recording, spool it up fully, and uh, start recording when I'm done. All right, you guys. So that is kind of what it should look like when it's done. Look at that, perfectly spooled. Um, I like to go just about there. If you're a beginner, I would like to to, you know, it's it's better just to underspool yourself just a little bit because it'll be less line twists. Um, and once you're done with that, you're gonna wanna snip it off the main spool and you wanna keep that tape handy because you'll see why here in a minute. I like to snip as close to the spool as possible. Just snip it off there. And when we bought the spool, it was kind of hooked up on that line thingy. So I'm gonna take that, really put it on that little crack right there. And then I'm gonna get a piece of tape. Put that tape down right on the on the uh, line holder there. It'll secure that line from flying out, making a huge mess. And uh, this line is only half used, so I can use this line if I uh, ever got a second rod and reel. And for four dollars, it's really good. It didn't even spool up the entire reel. There's still a ton of extra line left. Um, but with that being said, let's get the rod all re uh, ready. So now that we have uh, this rod all set up, it's already through the first eye hole. So we are just going to continue. Uh, and make it go up through all the high holes. And one of the things that's really important when I'm doing this is you wanna loosen the drag. The drag is this knob up top here. And if you go left, it's easier to pull line out of this reel, just like that, really easy. I could do it even looser probably. That's more like it. And then I can go all the way tightened. Let's tighten it all the way down. And as you can see, it's really hard to pull it out. So I like to, when I'm spooling up my uh, my rod for the first time or putting the, uh, the uh, line through the eye holes, I wanna go really loose drag. And I'm just gonna simply put my line through each and every single one of the eye holes. Uh, in this rod, I have one, two, three, four, five eye holes. 
So I'm just gonna go through each one through the black eye hole all the way to the very tippy top. You guys can hopefully see that. And be very careful with this, uh, this process. Make sure it goes through every single eye hole. It's very important. Once you've confirmed that it goes through every eye hole, um, let's get out the tackle that you need. So you can put away the fishing line and the tape for right now. And what you're going to want to do is take about two, about actually we'll do, we'll do about a foot of this line and snip it off. So about take a foot of this line. And all you're going to want to do is just simply snip it right off. Put it to the side. We'll use this later here in a minute. I'll show you for what for. But you're going to take these water gremlins, open up the pack here. We're going to take one out. And on the main line that's right now connected to the fishing rod, we're going to put it right through. So you're going to take your, uh, your fishing line here and you're going to take your sinker. And you're just going to put it right through. And when you're done, the weight should be able to slide freely on the line, just like so. You're going to put that down, make sure the line stays through the, the, the weight here. We'll go like that to make sure this stays through. You can put the weights aside for now. We're not going to need them again. And you're going to take out the hooks, or sorry, not the hooks, the swivels. Um, so with that being said, let's just take out one swivel. That's all you're going to need for right now. now we can put the extra swivels away. We won't need those. Um, and what you're going to want to do is tie a fisherman's knot. Just gonna go through one of the swivel, the, the, take the line, go through one of the swivel heads, doesn't matter which one, and you're gonna tie fisherman's knot. Whichever knot you prefer. I prefer, I always blank on the name. I believe it's called a uni knot, but it's just you go over a couple times, just like that. I know it's really hard to see, but you can just look up fishing knot on YouTube and that will find it for you. Just tie any knot of your choice to the swivel. And so now, and always cut your tag end just makes the rig look all nice and clean. And so now the weight should slide up until it hits, up until it hits the swivel. Make sure it's very important that the weight does not go past the swivel. If the weight goes past the swivel, you have an issue. So it slides, slides until it hits the swivel and it stops. Now we're gonna take that uh, extra 12 feet of line or 12 inches of line and tie it to the other end of the swivel. So I'm gonna take the same swivel other end and we're going to tie a little loop knot or a uni knot whatever you call it i don't know any knot of your choice and then so now you should have on one end of the swivel connected to the main line and on the other end you'll have uh, that piece of that 12 inch piece of fishing line you had before and you're almost done that's really almost it now all you're going to need to do pull out those uh, nice hooks that you got there whatever kind you purchased in my case it's the mustad size eight hooks i believe let's take a look though yep mustad size eight hooks we're gonna take these, put them away. We won't need them anymore. And on the end of that fishing line that you just attached to the swivel, you're gonna to wanna to tie the same knot that you've been using to the hook. That's what you're gonna to wanna to do. So just tie that just like so. And I'm gonna have a photo uh, when I'm done here of this rig completed um, from Google. It'll show it a little bit better than the way I'm showing it. Make it a little bit easier. This is called a Carolina rig for any of you guys that are wanting to know. This rig can be used with heavier line and heavier hooks for a ton of different species. Uh, but yeah, that's what it's called. It's called a Carolina rig. So you kind of cut the tag end. And so what you'll have now is this 3 4 ounce weight to the swivel to a 12 foot piece of line to the hook. And that'll all be attached to your rod and what I like to do is this rod doesn't have a hook holder, but I like to take my hook and I put it on this section of the eye hole. 
not the actual eye hole itself, but this metal piece right here. And then I go down here to my reel and I just tighten it up. Take my drag up just a little bit. And I tighten it up that way. Um, it's a very secure way to, to transport the rod. And with that being said, we're just gonna pack up our fishing stuff. I'm gonna show you which we're gonna bring and you're ready to go fishing. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna be fishing tomorrow morning and I'm gonna show you really quickly everything that I'm gonna be fishing with. Number one, here is my mallet. This is gonna be malleting the two PVC pipe rod holders because I'm gonna be fishing two rods. One of which is gonna be the one that we bought at Big Five. The other one is gonna be called the Cadence CC4. 80 bucks on Amazon right now. One of my favorite ultralight rods on the market. It's actually spooled up with 10 pound mono, so a little bit heavier mono. Uh, and the uh, second rod, the white and black one here, is gonna be fishing the orange power bait and the black Shimano uh, SFX, or Shimano FX 1000 size is gonna be fishing the yellow power bait. We're gonna see which one does better. And then of course, just in case we break off and need to make an extra rig, I'm gonna have some, I'm gonna have some more of the four pound mono the hooks, the egg sinkers, the swivels, as well as the pliers. And the one other thing that I forgot to mention is bells, fishing bells. I'm gonna go into a little bit more depth about what these are and why they're so helpful when we get to the spot. But I'm gonna bring, I'm going to be bringing two of these. Uh, these are mine, they weren't for sale at Big Five. I was trying to find them, but I know for a fact they're on sale on Amazon as well as West Marines. So I'm gonna be picking these up as well and bringing these with us. And with that being said, that's literally everything we need. It's really light, it'll all fit in a backpack. With that being said, let's head to Bon Tempe. All right, if you guys are still watching this right now, I really, really appreciate it. I would highly suggest you to consider subscribing. Here at Jay-Z Fishing, we make tons of really cool content like this every week at Wednesday at 5 p.m. A lot of his actual fishing videos and not as many tutorials, but we are gonna try and start making more tutorials, especially these in-depth ones on uh, how to catch these species here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so please consider subscribing. It's a really cool community we have here on YouTube and we're really trying to grow, uh, and subscribing helps us out. Uh, also, clicking the like button really, really helps us out. And if you want to leave us a comment down in the section, if you want to leave us a comment down in the comment section below, we would also really appreciate it. With that being said, let's get back to the video. All right, y'all. Uh, today is currently December 14th, uh, which would be a Tuesday. And this video is actually coming out tomorrow. I'm gonna be filming and editing this all in one day. We're gonna see how this goes. Right now we're in finals. I just finished school and I literally just went straight from school here to Bon Tempe. Um, it's currently, the time is, I believe it's 3.35 and this park closes at five. So I need to be out of here by 4.45 which means that I have just over an hour to fish. We're actually doing really good on time. I didn't think I was gonna get to the spot until at least four, but we're doing better than I thought. So we've got a little bit of a walk ahead of us, about maybe a quarter of a mile to the spot. And if you guys know where this spot is, you know, please be courteous and kind and uh, respect it. We are at Bon Tempe Lake. And um, when it comes to finding good spots, especially a Bon Tempe, I like to fish kind of at the points and I'll show you guys what I mean by that on like a geographical map. Um, but I like to fish like points and pinnacles and here in the Bay Area it just rained for about three days. So it's gonna be very muddy. I'm interested to see whether or not the water is still gonna be clear because here at Bon Tempe, the water is always very, very clear. But if it just rained, wouldn't that mean it would make it a little dirtier? We'll see. But either way, we got two rods, both of which have the same rig on them. We're gonna be fishing power bait. Let's walk to the spot and uh, see if we can uh, hook up to any trout. All right, y'all, so my normal spot, which is down there a little bit, was taken. So we're gonna be trying a different spot today. I've never tried before. It's just a little bit down, somewhat the same area. So pretty much just gonna, first thing that I'm gonna wanna do is just set the rods down. We can, we can worry about those in a minute. Um, I wanna figure out where I want my rod holders. I found that the most fish in this lake come from in the deeper areas, far cast out. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is set up our rod holders. So let's get those out as well as the mallet. And we're just going to take each one of these rod holders and we're going to mallet it into the dirt here. So I'm going to put one rod holder going this way. Okay, 
Yeah, so the rod holders are not very secure at this spot. Oh, like, like obviously, just like that. Just goes right in the water, so. So we're gonna get a little creative here. Let's see. There's a potential rod holder. Okay, there's one rod holder. That's, that'll be good. And the second one. Look at that, so we just needed to put it in a different place. Awesome. Throw them out over there. Hopefully we won't need it anymore today. Get the bait. I do put one rod in that holder. And the second rod. We'll put it in the second holder. You know, it's, it's very important to make sure your rod holder is secure because to keep the rod holder is what's keeping the rod from going in the water. So when in doubt, just make sure you have a secure rod holder. Now let's go get the power bait eggs. I'm gonna take. Let's see here. And I got one of the orange and one of the yellow. Now, when you're baiting up your hook, there's an important piece tactic that I didn't talk about yet. This is a little bit of a special trick. If you're still watching this video, you deserve to know this special trick. The goal, whole goal of this rig is to make sure that it's on the bottom, all except for the hook. The hook should be able to float. And these power bait eggs will keep the bait floating. Sorry about this horrible angle here. Let me just get, let me get one of these and I'll, I'll give you an example. So we're gonna take one of these eggs and all we're gonna do is thread it here. Let me get my, my hook here. All we're gonna do here is kind of thread it towards the, the side there, not through the middle, just kind of through the side, just so it's barely on. And now what we're gonna do, take this rod, near to your shore, drop in the water. The bait should hit the water, or the bait should hit to the bottom, but the egg should sink up, if that makes any sense. Now it's, it is floating with one, which is all we need. So all we need is one. Now if it wasn't floating with one, You'll need two eggs. And to cast, you can also look up videos on how to cast. I'll just do a quick tutorial. You're gonna take your index finger, pinch the line, make sure it's right, drag is tight. Flip the bail open, come backwards. Make sure when you cast, you're not gonna hit any trees of any sort. And you're just gonna flick it forward and release the line off of your index finger like you're throwing a baseball. That's what I always like to say. So, yoink. Zing it out there. There we go. And then as soon as it hits the uh, ground, maybe let out a little bit of line, but then close the bale, put it on the rod. Don't worry about reeling it tight yet. We'll do that in a minute. Once again, index finger, bale up, back over the shoulder. Pass it out there. We can close up our bait, bait things here. We don't really need to use it anymore. And we're gonna pull out those two bells. Now, I said I would explain what these are for. Pretty much what you're gonna wanna do is put these at the top of your uh, rod, and whenever they jingle, it means you have a bite. So, you're gonna wanna make sure that drag is not too tight, just like a hands pull out. You're just gonna reel until the line is tight. Now, once the line is tight, Take your rod, take your bell, put it on top of the rod. Now what happens is if the bell rings, it means you got a fish on. Let's do the same thing for this other rod here. We're gonna loosen up the drag here. We made it up top. It's very important to have your line tight after it's hit the ground. Now we're fishing. We're actually gonna switch these lines because I crossed them. So this line I'm gonna put right here. And then this line I'm gonna put right here. And now all we're gonna do is simply play the waiting game.
All right, we got about 15 more minutes of fishing. And uh, if I don't catch a fish today, I'm still gonna include this in this section, but I will show you guys what a bite looks like and I'll explain how to fight the fish. I am a little bit mad that I'm not gonna be able to get one or that I wouldn't get one. If I don't get one, I would be mad because I really wanted to show you guys how cool these fish look. But um, I guess with that, you know, it's a little bit of suspense. I wasn't able to get one. You should go out and get one yourself. Um, but uh, hopefully in the next 15, 14 minutes now, I can get a fish. Oh, that scared me. That's not my bell. He has bells. Oh, that scared me. Um, hopefully in the next 14 minutes, I can get a fish to show you guys. And uh, one other thing too, you know, usually, I would say a good majority of the time that I go trout fishing, I'm keeping the fish. Uh, but it's, it's, you know, responsible fishing to uh, every so often release a few. So we're going to be only releasing today. We're not going to be keeping any fish that we catch. Uh, but if you guys are interested in learning, if you do want to learn how to uh, cook and fillet these fish, uh, I do have some videos made. I think, if I'm not wrong, uh, there should be a link right about here that'll pop up. Uh, and that'll teach you guys how to... Uh, how to clean and cook those fish and it'll have a clip of me actually catching a fish so if you guys are interested in that section of rainbow trout fishing click the link that i had right there and um or you could just go through our channel and watch some of our rainbow trout videos they're really cool but uh yeah i'm gonna stop recording and hopefully start recording again when we have a fish on okay so the dude is leaving at the spot and he's leaving me about five minutes to fish that spot before I have to then go. That way I make it uh, out of the park before it locks me out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack up all my other stuff and then I'm going to sit at that spot with my rod in my hand. I'm not even gonna set up the rod holder just because it's one rod and I only have a couple minutes and I'm just gonna sit at that spot because I think that's the spot and I think I can get a fish. I go there so we're gonna fish that spot for literally five minutes and then get going here um, but one other thing one other tr trick ooh, that I forgot to mention to you guys every time you pick up your rod when you're trout fishing when you go to reel it in it's always important just to kind of set the hook a little bit just because sometimes these fish you can see, you don't even see the bite and you know that and there's a fish on so what I'm gonna do here is put my tripod away Go, go figure out this rod here. So I'm gonna, just in case there may be a fish on here, what we're gonna do is pick it up here, take off the bell, bell way, tighten up my drag. Just set the hook really quick. Nope, nothing on there. I would feel something if there was something on there, which there isn't. Oh, you really gotta tighten the drag. And then we're just gonna reel. Ah, oh, super fast, super fast. Get it off these weeds. Uh. There you go, got him on the weeds. All right, so. Real quick, let's see. Okay, so I still got bait on here. So as soon as this guy leaves, we're just gonna cast out, we're gonna hold the rod see if we can't get one though and doing that nothing 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 that's unfortunate it is what it is though well i might as well show you guys what the bite looks like the bite is very subtle you guys can see that it's just like that it will look just like that and like I said, it's much better to go on a day when there's less wind because especially for a beginner, it's easier to tell. I mean, even for me, I thought that there was a lot of times where it was wind, but it was a bite. There was one that might have actually been a bite, but go when there's less wind is what I would suggest. But I really do like this combo. If you guys are interested in picking this up, this is the Shimano FX. I don't know, it's, it's really nice. I like it. I tried looking for it on Amazon a couple nights ago and I couldn't find it. So I think I gotta steal it, Big Five. With that, with that being said, we need to rush out of here and get back to the gate before we get locked out. All right, you guys, I'm currently driving back from Bon Tempe. And honestly, I'm a little pissed off that I wasn't able to catch a fish. Just wasn't my day, I guess. Uh, you know, the conditions weren't perfect. With trout fishing, the conditions are really important. And uh, today was a prime example of that. I had the right baits, I had the right rigs. 
Uh, just wasn't really good timing. I didn't have as much time as I would have wanted to. In a perfect world, I would have gone in the morning, but I have school. That being said, the next two weeks after this week, we don't have school. We're gonna be filming a ton of really, really cool videos that I'm really, really excited about. A lot of them are trout videos, except some of them are on a boat, which is gonna be really, really, really exciting. And um, I did think it was gonna be a really cool idea to kind of show a clip right now of a previous trout video, show you guys what a real tri trout bite looks like and how to fight a trout. So I'm gonna insert that clip right now. Is that a bite that we just got? Trout on land. Oh, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed watching that clip. Um, that was a clip from a video about four weeks back. Yeah, four or five weeks back. If you guys are interested in watching that full video, a link for that will be in the description box below. And uh, with that being said, let's head back to my house, make sure there's not any cars. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys some final tips and tricks if you're still watching this. And uh, yeah, let's do that. like promised in the beginning of today's video here are three uh, little secret tricks that i always use when trout fishing and they're going to help you step up, step up your trout fishing game as well uh, tip number one is sense when it comes to trout fishing it can be really really hard sometimes and it, they trout can be very finicky like they were uh, in today's video uh, when this happens the number one piece of advice that i can give is throw on some scent onto your bait or your lure at our, in our situation, we are using bait, and you know, a lot of guys will go out and they'll buy specific scents, and you know, I've found that those work, but personally for me, the scent that works best for me is the actual power bait scent. What do I mean by that? We usually fish the power bait eggs, right? Those tiny eggs, but there's also that dough that I earlier kind of talked about very, very briefly. We saw it at Big Five. What I always like to do is buy one extra carton of that, as well as the eggs, take the eggs when they're on the hook, and put them in the dough kind of smear the dough all on the eggs, get that egg covered in that dough, just like a thin layer. That, uh, that, that dough will add a little bit of glitter, it'll add a little bit of scent, and the trout go absolutely crazy for it. This is a secret that I've never really told anyone, but it really, really works well for trout, and 99% of the time when I am trout fishing, I'm always doing that. Yes, it's gonna cost more money to buy that dough, but it's so, so useful. And if you wanna catch trout on the days that they can be really finicky, I highly suggest using this strategy. Tip number two on today's list is to use fluorocarbon line. What is fluorocarbon line? Fluorocarbon line is very similar to mono. It looks extremely similar, except it's gonna be a lot more expensive and it's gonna be invisible in the water. When you put monofilament line into the water, especially really clear water, no matter how thin it is, you'll still be able to see it. It kind of has like a bluish color to it. Uh, and you'll see that when you spool up your reel, your line will be kind of bluish. Now, if you're using fluorocarbon, it should be completely clear. And as soon as it gets in the water, it's practically invisible. What does this mean? Trout are very, very, very good at seeing fishing line. And so if you have monofilament line, sometimes those trout, especially in super clear water, uh, in lakes such as Bontempe, they'll be able to see that mono. 
So I'm not saying that you should spool up your line or spool up your uh, reel with fluorocarbon because that would be extremely expensive, but I prefer to make my leaders out of fluorocarbon. It just adds an extra bit of invisibility and it really, really, really helps when it comes, especially on those days where the trout are a little bit finicker, finickier. I will have a link to some of my favorite fluorocarbon down in the description box below. And I would highly suggest picking yourself up even at just a small spool. Give it a shot. It's really, really, really good. And if you have the money, I would probably suggest spooling up your entire reel with fluorocarbon just because it is that much better than monofilament line. Tip number three on today's list is, it kind of sounds like a, like a simple one, but most people overthink it. Research and plan. Do your research and do your planning. I always like to plan my fishing trips at least about a week in advance, if not at least a couple of days. And when I'm doing that, there are a lot of things that I'm looking at. I'm looking at the spots, I'm looking at the reports, and I have a plan for how I'm gonna fish for these fish, what baits I'm gonna use, what scents, what time I'm gonna get to the spot. All of these things are meticulously thought out, and the more thought that you put into planning your fishing trips, the more likely you'll be successful. I really can't stress this enough, Plan, 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 plan. Do your research and it will pay off in the long run. With that being said, I really, really wanna thank everyone who's still watching this right now. It means so much to me. I put a lot of time and effort into making this video and I really hope you guys get something out of it. If you do, tell us in the comment section below. And if you guys are able to catch trout using these tips, tell us in the comment section below. We'd love to hear about you guys' catches. Uh, but with that being said, I wanna sign off for today. I just want to remind you, hit subscribe, click the like button. It's the best way to reward me for spending a lot of time and effort on this video. And uh, we'll see you next week, Wednesday at 5 p.m. See ya.